It's my privilege now to introduce the guest speaker for the event, and I'm going to read you her bio, which is rather, rather expansive. Our guest speaker is a 1980 graduate of Mishawaka High School and received a, her Bachelor of Arts degree in Communications from Indiana, Indiana University Bloomington. After a decade of journalism and education policy experience, she founded the Calamari Productions in 1998. At the time, Calamari was one of the first female-owned television production companies in the United States. As Calamari's founder and chief executive, she brings 25 years of broadcast experience to the Calamari projects from her time as a radio and TV news reporter in Indianapolis to the two decades she has spent creating, writing, producing award-winning documentaries and TV series. Today, Calamari Productions remains the only company in the world with special waivers granted by state Supreme Courts around the U.S. to bring documentary cameras inside juvenile courts and juvenile prisons, venues that are legally closed to media and the public. Because Calamari has gained the trust and extraordinary camera access into the award-winning, uh, into these venues, they've been able to produce award-winning films and video content used around the globe and from television networks and streaming outlets. Calamari Productions has won including Emmys, prestigious Edward R. Murrow Award, and more than 16 national awards for groundbreaking programming. Her career also included three years as Deputy Legislative Director to former Indiana Governor Evan Bayh, where she assisted in writing three states of the state addresses. It is my honor and privilege to present our guest speaker, Ms. Karen Brown. Thank you, Mr. Ross, and welcome everyone tonight. Well, class of 2021, you made it. Give yourselves a hand. And now, turn around and give your parents and loved ones a hand because they helped you get here tonight, right? First of all, I want to say you probably thought it was a cruel joke after everything you guys have been through when Mr. Ross announced that you'd have a Karen for your graduation speaker tonight. I know, I know. I'm, I'm going to take one second to dispel that myth. Let me tell you the last, one of the last acts of my career here at Mishwaka High School was staging a senior walkout when our principal wouldn't allow us to have a pep rally the day of the big Mishawaka Penn High School football game. Not only did I stage a senior class walkout, but that morning I called all the TV stations and the local newspapers and I said, be at Mishawaka at 10 a.m. because the seniors are gonna do something big today. And sure enough, the cameras showed up, the newspapers showed up, we were on the local news that night, we were in the newspapers the next morning, and kind of my career as a juvenile delinquent uh, in Mishawaka was pretty well sealed. We Karens had an epic reputation back in the day. Now, I want to say, despite the number of years that I've been gone from Mishawaka, this place has never left me. I was born and raised on the corner of Division and Lawrence Street. I lived there until I left for college. My parents lived in that same house until the day they both died almost 30 years ago, over 30 years ago. Back in my day, our part of the neighborhood was considered the other side of the river. And it was filled with wonderful working class immigrant families just like my own. And I didn't realize until a little later on that it was also considered the wrong side of the tracks. Now, you have to understand, I loved my neighborhood. I loved my childhood. And as far as I was concerned, money or lack of it back then meant absolutely nothing to me. I realize now that my parents realized that my brother, sister, and I might have a few higher hurdles to climb than others to achieve our dreams. And let me tell you, the three of us had some big dreams. 
but my parents never once allowed us to think that our financial situation or our neighborhood would ever stand in the way of us achieving those dreams. My parents ended up passing away when I was in my 20s, but I can tell you to this day, the fact that they never said that we were less than has been one of the greatest gifts of my life. Truth be told, my brother and sister should probably be standing up here tonight. Everyone in my family, as well as all of my classmates, will tell you they're way smarter than me, they're more talented than me, yet here's their baby sister. I can tell you that my brother, a 1978 graduate of Mishawaka High School, is one of the world's top golf photographers. If you Google his name, you will see the most iconic photographs of Tiger Woods and all the best golfers in the world over the past 30 years. My sister, Kathy Farrar, a 1975 graduate of Mishawaka High School and the first in our family to go to college, is a brilliant writer, and she and her husband own their own production uh, publishing company in Chicago. Yet, all of our dreams started on Division Street. I can tell you that my TV career actually started in the halls here at Mishawaka High School, just down the hall in Mr. Chamberlain's radio and TV class. That one teacher and that one class dictated what I was going to major in in college and ultimately led to the career I have today. And I can tell you 23 years ago when I started my production company and ended up signing my first TV contract, I wrote Mr. Chamberlain and I thanked him for that. Mishawaka was and still is a part of my journey. When Mr. Ross introduced me here tonight, he said all the things that good resumes like to tout, the networks and the awards. And while I'm really proud and grateful for all I've been able to accomplish, there's one piece of advice I want to give you kids here tonight, and that's this. Never, ever wait for someone to tell you, you can. Trust me, you can. I was told early in the 1980s I couldn't be a sports reporter because women didn't do that back then. I was told I couldn't start my own production company because I didn't have the expertise or the resources to do something like that. I was told I'd never sign big network TV contracts because a random girl from Mishawaka, Indiana just didn't get those kinds of opportunities. And then eventually I went out and I did all those things because A, I'm kind of crazy, but B, I'm also a proud Mishawaka caveman from Division Street and absolutely no one can stop small town kids from doing exactly what they want to do with hard work, grit, and determination. Look, despite what I do for a living and where I live now, I vividly remember what it's like to go to an ATM and pray to God there's going to be enough money in my account to live for another week. You never forget things like that, ever. I know what it's like to be looked over for opportunities again and again and again, not just days and weeks and months, but years. And yes, it still happens today. And I can't quite explain when people ask me, Karen, why didn't you just quit? Why didn't you just give this crazy business up? And the best thing I can say is because the Karen Furor that walked these halls back in the late 70s and 1980, is still in me today. She always has been, she always will be, and that fire is still burning. A lot of you here have that fire too. As a matter of fact, you all do. Some of you have it already, and that's great. And others of you, you might not realize what it is for many years, and that's okay too. Be patient with yourself. The other thing, I, I always recommend is be open to opportunities that you think you might not have any interest in at all. I thought I would be a sports reporter my whole life. I said I hated politics. I didn't even like my husband in high school and I married a 1979 graduate of Mishawaka High School. I ended up being fired as a sports reporter. I worked in a governor's office for three years. I started a production company that focuses on juvenile justice issues of all things. 
and I actually do still like my husband today after 35 years of marriage. I can tell you that I know it's a Friday night and everybody wants to get out of here and I remember exactly what it's like to be all of you 41 years ago. I think that there are, it's just one story I'd like to share before I leave the stage tonight and it's something that my mom told me when I was your age. As I said to you before, I think my parents knew that if I was going to chase my dream of being in network TV, I was going to meet people and have to correspond with people who had life experiences that were completely foreign to me. And so she said, Karen, if down the road you're ever in a conversation and you feel it's a bit intimidating or a bit over your head, be an interviewer. People love to talk about themselves and their experiences. Once you do that, it'll take the focus off what you don't know and the conversation will flow a lot more smoothly after that. Well, I can tell you those words never rang more true than when I signed my first big network TV series deal and a couple of executives decided to take me to some swanky sushi restaurant in Los Angeles. Well, I had never had sushi before. I'm a spaghetti and meatballs kind of girl. I had no idea what to order, and a little bit of panic started to set in, and then my mom's words immediately came to mind. And I started interviewing those network executives like Oprah Winfrey and a Prince Harry and Meghan Markle interview. I interviewed those guys until the server finally came with, to take our order, and I said, you know, I haven't even had a chance to look at the menu. You guys go ahead and order for me. I'm sure I'll love it. I love all kinds of sushi. Crisis was averted, and I've been an interviewer ever since. So before you leave here tonight, I have just a few little pearls of wisdom that I'd like to share that I hope might stay with you as you all leave to go celebrate your hard-earned diplomas tonight. Number one, make as many contacts anywhere and everywhere that you can. You have no idea how those contacts might be life-changing in the future. Number two, I meet a lot of extraordinary kids in dark places inside prisons. Here's one thing I always tell those kids. Where you are does not have to define who you become. You are the holder of your dreams. Number three, some of your friends here tonight are gonna to be friends for a lifetime and other friendships are going to fade away. But don't be sad about what's over. Always stay excited for what's ahead. Finally, number four, what you take from this world might give you a living, but what you give to this world is what gives you a life. Trust me on this one, you get back what you give. Class of 2021, stay hungry, stay humble, and never let this pandemic define who you were as students but use it as energy for all the amazing things you can do ahead. Enormous congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, amazing words, and I appreciate your being able to travel here to deliver them.